CataractCoach.com. Lens milk leaks into the vitreous cavity. You know, I've never seen this in 30 years. Have you seen it? Leave a comment below. Let's watch this case together. Now, we've got an experienced surgeon here doing an intumescent white cataract. Look at all the lens milk coming out. So certainly intumescent, liquefied lens cortex. So aspirating that out, yeah, release it out of the eye. Maybe put more viscoelastic. Looks like the left hand has viscoelastic. And then let's continue to get some sort of rexus done. But wow, a tremendous amount of liquefied lens material. So it could be even almost a morgagnian cataract. So we've got really a lot of lens protein liquefaction or liquefaction. What's the correct word there? So here we go. Getting the rexus completed here. Now, good control by the surgeon here. Completing a nice five millimeter caps rexus. That looks great. And again, everything looks pretty normal. I don't notice any zonulopathy or weak zonular support here. And the surgeon's able to get a good looking rexus done. But the question is, well, how is this liquefied lens material gonna seep out of the capsule bag and into the vitreous? That's an interesting case here. So we can heat out more and more of this lens material, so aspirate it out. And obviously a, a dense central nucleus there. So let's see what the surgeon's gonna do. Looks like a chopper in the left hand. So it's so gonna buzz into the fake nucleus here. And there's a lot of more lens cortex coming out there, liquefied lens cortex. So surgeon's going around with the chopper and looks like a nice phaco chop there. Again, a little bit of a fibrous lens, a pretty dense lens. So it's going to take a little bit more effort to chop this up into smaller pieces. But again, good technique here. And then again, buzz in with the phaco probe, get that chopper around the equator, get some, yep, counter traction, boom. That's reasonable. You Again, you may have to take your time. On a brunescent lens like this, where it's really dense, it's fibrous, it's leathery, it's sometimes difficult to get the chops to fully propagate. So buzz in again with the phaco probe. Let's take a look. And then slowly but surely, you'll get through this nucleus here. Now, the key on these cases is just to take your time. The tough part's going to be basically a lack of a red reflex. So let me think about this. So the capsule bag is filled with liquefied lens material. Now, we have seen cases of like a phacomorphic glaucoma where you've got like lens material seeping out of the capsule bag anteriorly, right, into the aqueous. I've seen that before. But I don't know if I've seen the liquefied lens material seeping through the posterior capsule. Now, there is no puncture of the posterior capsule. It's totally intact. So how do you get the lens milk or the lens liquefied lens material from the capsule bag out of it? And so obviously there must be some permeability to the posterior capsule. And you'll see that there's a large amount of liquefied lens material or lens milk in the vitreous cavity, probably kind of bunched up and collected in burger space there. So in front of the anterior hyaline face. And again, that's going to make visualization poor. Now the question is, what do you do about it? Do you stop and do a posterior rexus now and try to wash it out? Do you do a pars plana in, in, incision or entry side and put a trocar in and try to do a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy or you just wait it out what do you do now look lens nucleus is coming out there's that dense, dense lens nucleus you're getting it out very nicely but look at the liquefied lens material behind the posterior capsule again i've never seen this and to be frank i hope i don't have to see this in person this is a tough case and again i'm not sure what the the best move of uh, is here what's the next move so again, the net lens nucleus will come out nicely, but then the question is, do I do a posterior rexus and just try aspirate or wash out some of that fluid? Do we keep the posterior capsule intact and instead do we pars plan a trocar placement and do a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy? Again, there's the lens material all coming out, and now you got an empty capsular bag. There's the viscoelastic going inside. Yeah, that's a smart move. There really is no lens cortex. Hey, did I tell you about retina around our sister channel? Here's where I wish I had a retina colleague. Help me out here. Do a parse plate of vitrectomy. Let's clean this up. So our surgeon here is going to put the eye wall in the capsule bag. And so obviously eye wall power was determined by non-optical means, i.e. using an a, a scan to get the axial length measured by ultrasound. So that's good. And let's get that lens in the bag. Here comes the eye probe. Kind of position that eye wall completely in the capsule bag. Get both haptics in there. All right, obviously a very experienced surgeon did a beautiful job here, but now what do you do? What should you do to get out this lens? Do you just wait it out? Do you just give the patient? So you can aspirate behind it and you'll clean out the capsular bag, but that's liquefied lens material behind the posterior capsule in burger space in front of the anterior hyaluronic face. So now what do you do? Is the liquefied lens material throughout the vitreous? I don't know. Does the patient need a big part plane of vitrectomy? I'm not sure. Please leave your comment below. I need to learn from you. Where are my retina colleagues? 
What should you do here? I think I would just finish the case like this as a cataract surgeon and refer the patient to a vitreal colleague, probably for a full vitrectomy. I just don't want that big inflammatory load in the vitreous cavity. Anyway, leave a comment below. What do you think? And definitely check out Retina Rounds. This is where we need our retina knowledge and our retina specialists.